I've got 15 Louis Vuitton bags to show you today, which I collected over a period of five years for a total of under 4,000 US dollars or under 6,000 Australian dollars. So today I'm going to take you through a tour of my entire Louis Vuitton handbag collection. And as a bonus, I'll be showing you my entire Louis Vuitton shoe collection and clothing collection. So in today's video, I'll be showing you each bag in the order in which I bought them. And for each bag, I'll be giving you a quick overview of the bag. I'll tell you the price I paid and where I bought it from, and I'll have mod shots for every single bag. Now, if there's any bag that you like and you want to know more details about, I actually have a review video for each of these bags, which I'll have listed in the description box down below. Okay, so let's get straight into it. So I have a special guest to introduce to everyone today. So this is my sister's dog and his name is Archie and I'm dog sitting him today. He's a little bit nervous, so I'm gonna be putting him back down. So starting off with the bags that I bought from 2018. So that was the year that I first started collecting vintage designer handbags. And in that year, the prices were so good. So I collected seven Louis Vuitton bags in my very first year of buying. Okay, so starting with bag number one in my collection, this is the Louis Vuitton Boite PM handbag which I bought in 2018. So this is a Vachetta and Monogram bag. You can see here, it's got this pleating detail. It's got a turn lock at the front, which holds the flap down. And it also has a top zip. This is the back, the side, and the bottom. And it's got this gorgeous feet on the bottom as well. Now I currently have her stuff, but if we open her up, there is this beige Alcantara lining and it does have the old mobile phone pockets there. That's when you know the bag's a little bit dated. Now this bag is not quite vintage there so we're cheating a little bit because it is a 2012 bag and we're only in 2023 at the moment. So how much did I pay for this bag and where did I get it from? So I bought this bag from a private Australian seller on eBay and I paid 600 Australian dollars, which at that time worked out to be about 520 US dollars. Now, the funny thing about this bag is the woman who was selling it, she said it was actually gifted to her by her partner and she didn't like it. Hence, she was selling it. So this bag became mine. Now, I don't actually like to wear this bag handheld like so or on the crook of my arm. I like posing it with that way for photos, but in real life, I love to add a Vachetta crossbody strap to this and wear it crossbody or as a long shoulder bag. And to do so, you can see I've actually added these ribbons, which I've looped through here on each of the four rings so that I can add a crossbody strap. Now I used to just attach the crossbody strap directly onto the rings. However, it did start really scratching up the hardware and I didn't like that. Hence, I added these ribbons there just to give me a little bit more versatility with how I like to wear my bags because I am a hands-free girl. Now, if you've watched some of my videos before, you know I'm obsessed with Louis Vuitton and specifically vintage Louis Vuitton pieces. And today, my entire collection is made up of vintage Louis Vuitton bags, shoes, and clothing. Now, it's not that I don't like newer Louis Vuitton bags, however, just going out and spending thousands of dollars per bag a few times a year, look, that's just not realistic for me. And these vintage pieces, just they just do something special for me. Whether it be the impeccable quality, this thick vintage canvas, or the really gold vintage hardware, that old money luxury feel, Oh, it just just tickles my fancy and to top it all off these pieces are actually within budget for an ordinary girl like me so bag number two in my collection is the Louis Vuitton Bordeaux GM two-in-one clutch bag so once I got started from the Boite things just went gangbusters after that so you can see it's a monogram canvas and vintage treated leather bag with gold hardware. Just look at that LV logo. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? So we've got a front flap. It's got a snap button there. 
you can see the straps are detachable they have snap buttons holding them there it's completely leather lined with a back pocket here and if you turn her around I've got another back pocket here and the great thing about this bag is my back pocket is not peeling or sticky or tarry so I got really lucky there and I love this beautiful treated leather oh just gorgeous now how much did I pay for this I got this bag on eBay from my favorite Japanese seller brand JFA and I got it at the time for 300 US dollars, which was about 350 Australian dollars. So at the time, the Australian dollar was a bit stronger. So the conversion rate was better for me and the price was really good as well. At that time, I didn't even have to pay tax on the item. It was tax free. Oh, such good times. Those times are over. But now in terms of how I like to wear this bag, this bag I love to wear as a crossbody bag, but if I am taking it out for an evening, more formal event, I will wear it as a clutch. Super gorgeous and this treated leather means it is water resistant. So it's an all weather bag. Unlike the Vachetta on the Boiti, I don't have to worry about rain or stains or anything like that. So bag number three in my collection, this is the Louis Vuitton Vintage Montaigne Clutch in the 27 size in the black epi leather with gold hardware. So this is what she looks like from the front. So we've got this beautiful LV logo in the circle here, front flap snap button. This is what she looks like, completely leather lined. You do get a zipper pocket at the back. Now if you turn her around, there is another pocket here at the back also. Now these, this D ring and these straps, I added on myself. They were alterations that I did. It is just purely a clutch, but I am a hands-free girl. So I love to have crossbody straps attached. Now I got this for such a steal. So again, this was from my favorite Japanese seller, Brand JFA the same company I bought this one from. Okay, guess the price. Comment the price down below. Okay, now let's see if you're right. I got this for 128 US dollars. So good, the price was so good. So that works out to be about 170 Australian dollars. And at that time, I did not have to pay tax. Free shipping also. Oh, those were the days, 2018. I should have bought more then. Now, I have had I have added a top handle strap and a crossbody strap as well. Sometimes I like to wear it crossbody long shoulder. Sometimes I like to wear it short shoulder. Um, sometimes I just do handheld. So versatile. I've even worn this to kind of like more corporate-y functions. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Okay, back to monogram. So the fourth bag I collected in 2018 is one of my favorites, the St. Cloud GM bag. Now this is such a gorgeous, gorgeous, so useful bag. So this is what she looks like at the front. So we've got this saddle shape, Vachetta here. And we've got this gold hardware here with a snap button. All leather lined. Now my bag's currently stuffed, but there is a back zipper pocket and this is just one main compartment. That's what the back looks like. Again, another slip pocket here. And we have a crossbody strap, which is adjustable. Does have a shoulder pad, just not detachable. And back then, most of the bags did not have detachable straps, so that's pretty ordinary for those times. And this base here is super sturdy. This bag will sit on the table upright and it won't fall over. It's really well designed. You can see it has like these this groove here at the back, which helps the balance of the bag. Love it. Now, how much did I pay for this and where did I buy it from? I actually got this from an Instagram seller, a Thai Instagram seller. Price was so good. She's a great seller. I have bought a couple of pieces from her already. So I paid what would be the equivalent of 130 US dollars or 200 Australian dollars. Such a good price. Now this bag, I just love to wear crossbody. 
I don't really wear it one shoulder. I am more so a crossbody girl. This bag is so easy to pair with so many outfits, whether it be casual or a bit more semi-formal, a bit more dressy, super easy to pair. And monogram, you can just pair with any color. It will just go. I love this bag. I've worn it to death. And I condition it about once a year or so. Now, if you want to learn how to condition and clean a vintage Louis Vuitton bags, I've got an easy three-step method, which I'll link the tutorial video up above and in the description box down below. So easy for you to follow. And if you just do it like once a year, it should be enough for your vintage bags. Okay, so bag number five in my collection. This is the Pochette Accessoires Epi Leather. 24 centimeter size in the Canyon Fawn color. Now the pochette accessoire is a pretty basic bag. It just looks like so from the front. Little discreet LV logo there, like that. Back looks the same as the front. And we've got a nice suede-like Alcantara lining. There's no slip pockets or anything, it's just one compartment. And I've got these rings here. And here, so that's where I've attached my crossbody strap. I took off the original leather shoulder strap because I just wasn't using it. Now, I actually got this from a Facebook Louis Vuitton group. I got it from a Filipino seller and I got it for about 130 US dollars at the time, which worked out to be about 200 Australian dollars. So you can see a running theme with my bag so far. So it's been really good prices in 2018 so you can see why I bought so many and really I should have bought more if I knew that the prices were going to go up like this now but nevertheless I did buy a lot anyway now I do love to use this bag as a grab and go crossbody bag so easy to use I know it's not super spacey but it just has enough room for all my essentials super handy for walking the dog or just running to the store to get some quick groceries. Ah, love it, love it, love it. And I loved it so much, I ended up buying another one in 2022, which I'll be showing you later on in the video. Okay, bag number six in 2018. This is the vintage Louis Vuitton sack bandolier bag. Gorgeous, thick, vibrant monogram canvas paired with vintage treated pig skin leather now this treated leather is different from the treated leather on the sac bordeaux so this bag is older than this bag and the leather is a little bit different this is pig skin treated leather whereas i don't think this is pig skin treated leather and the leather here is softer as well whereas the leather here is harder now this bag is actually pre-date code. So there's actually no date code in this bag. So this is what it looks like from the front. The back looks the same, the side and the bottom. Now you can see this shoulder strap actually gets looped all the way around the bag. Now it does come with a shoulder strap here and you do get an adjustable strap. Now you'll notice there's three adjustment holes here and then one further away up here. Now you'll see in my mod shots, you can actually wear this now as a shorter shoulder bag or a longer shoulder bag. If we open her up, it actually has the super vintage Eclair zipper. Now the bag is currently stuffed, but it is completely leather lined with the treated pig skin leather. I love this bag as a traveling bag, whether it be taking it on as my carry on bag for plane or throwing it into the car for road trips. Super versatile, super hard wearing. This base is semi hard, so it's not going to misshapen easily and it keeps its shape really well. You just need to stuff it to keep the shape along the top. Gorgeous bag. Now I bought this from a Thai Instagram seller, so cheap, about 130 US dollars, about 200 Australian dollars at that time. Such good prices. Oh, I'm so glad I bought this bag. 
Now I love this bag so much that I actually featured it as my vintage alternative for the Speedy Bandelier. And I have that in my video of five vintage Louis Vuitton alternatives to Louis Vuitton's popular classic bags, which I'll link up above and in the description box down below. And you can see in these mod shots how similar it is to the bandolier and how it can be used and worn in the exact same way as the speedy bandolier. Okay, so my last bag of 2018, this is the seventh bag in my Louis Vuitton collection. This is the pochette curad in tiger leather. This is my only tiger leather Louis Vuitton piece. So you can see here, it doesn't quite look like Epi because Epi has the vertical lines, but this does not. So it is a grained leather. You can see this is what it looks like here. We've got a gorgeous S lock at the front and it opens up like so. Now it's completely leather lined and being a clutch, it has this built in wrist strap. Here we have a slip pocket at the back. Now I've added these D rings because as you know, I am a cross body girl and I want to be able to add cross body straps and because I got this bag at such a good price I did not care about altering it because I thought it was worth it to make the bag usable for me okay so I got this again from my favorite Japanese seller on eBay brand JFA great great price 118 US dollars no tax free shipping oh such a good price works out to be 170 Australian dollars at that time so so good now this bag you can see I love this s lock here I love s locks look there's three s lock bags up there I was so excited when I finally was able to successfully polish this hardware and make it beautiful and shiny because for years I tried Brasso, I tried polishing cloths and I just could not get this S-Lock to shine up well. But I finally found a product to use and I'll show you how easy it is. I have a tutorial video on how to polish the vintage Louis Vuitton hardware and get it from dull and tarnished to beautiful and shiny like this. Just a couple of easy steps, which I'll link up above and in the description box down below. So easy to do it, guys. And now my hardware is so gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Now, I love wearing this bag crossbody. It's quite light to wear. So I just like to have this bag in my rotation because I didn't know that I actually like green bags until I bought this bag. Green was just not really a color I thought about when it came to bags. But I got this bag. And I started wearing it and I realized, oh my God, I actually love green bags. This green is actually really neutral. So if any of you guys are out there thinking that, hey, look, I'm looking for a neutral color that's not black or beige or white, think about dark green because this was actually surprisingly neutral. Keep that in mind. Okay, guys, so we're heading over into the year 2019 now. And this is the eighth bag in my collection. This is the vintage Louis Vuitton concord handbag in the toledo blue epi leather with my gorgeous favorite s lock here oh this one came shiny so i was super stoked about that i don't think i've actually even polished this one since i bought it it's just been shiny and stayed shiny so gorgeous so this is a top handle grandma bag so it looks like so we've got the front flap Let's open up the S-Lock. Completely leather lined. So it's actually black leather on the inside. One compartment, two compartment, middle zippered pocket and a back zippered pocket. This is what the back looks like. No pocket there. Side, accordion shape, bottom. Gorgeous, gorgeous bag. This is the only Toledo blue bag I have in my collection. 
Now this I got from an Instagram seller. I don't know if he's still on Instagram. He's a Filipino guy, but he was based out in Japan. Um, his name is Ian Carlos and he used to go by Ian Carlos TV, but I'm not sure if he's still selling anymore. And he even had a YouTube channel before, but he doesn't post anymore either. So this bag I got from him for 260 US dollars. Still a really good price. That's 387 ish Australian dollars at the time. Oh, at the time, actually, I was thinking, oh, I'd overpaid for it. Um, I actually wanted the Monso, but this is what I could find in a better price range. So I settled for this. So I was kind of sort of regretting not saving the money and putting it towards the Monso, which is the one I actually wanted. But now with the crazy prices of bags, I'm glad I got this for this price and I'm glad I have this in my collection. And in the end, I did end up buying the Monsos that I wanted, but nevertheless, I'm happy that I have this anyway. So even though I initially was a bit possibly regretting it, I don't regret it anymore. Now this bag, um, I do attach the straps to these rings here. Now it has caused scratches on the hardware, um, but I think that's worth it because otherwise this bag wouldn't get as much use. This bag I love to wear both crossbody and as a longer shoulder bag just depending on the outfit I have, but I do like to pair this bag specifically with dresses. I don't know why, maybe it's cause it's like a grandma chic look, but this bag goes really cute with dresses. Okay, so the ninth bag in my collection, introducing the Louis Vuitton Sac Vendôme. So this is a vintage thick monogram bag combined with the treated leather. Now this bag is so old that it is pre-date code. I think it's possibly from the 1970s or 80s. And if you're familiar with the vintage Sac Dauphine, which is the original version of the remake Dauphine, I think this bag is from the same era as that bag because that's also pre-date code for a lot of them. Now look at this gorgeous turn lock here. It's actually in the shape of a padlock. Let's open her up leather lining here one compartment two compartment a zippered compartment in the middle and a back zippered compartment now at the back there is no pocket accordion shape from the side and accordion shape on the bottom now i currently have the bag stored with the strap like this but i don't wear it like that so the bag would normally look like this. So this bag I bought again from my favorite Japanese seller. If you know who my favorite Japanese seller now, pause this video and write their name down below because I've said it so many times in this video. I think you guys all know who my favorite Japanese seller is. Yes, you got it. It's brand JFA. Now this bag was a little bit expensive compared to all my other bags at the time. Not crazy, but you know, this was 600 US dollars. So compared to all the others where I was paying 200 or under, this was 600 US dollars, which works out to be about 800 Australian dollars at that time in 2019. This bag is so unique. Tell me, how many girls do you see with this bag? Even on YouTube, Instagram, on social media, how many girls have this bag? Not very many. You'll see some social media of resellers posting this bag. But how many people are you seeing have this bag in their collection on social media? Not very many at all. This is so gorgeous. Such an underrated bag that no one talks about. And it's probably because maybe no one even knows about this bag. But I'm here to introduce you guys to the Sac Vendôme. I love to wear this bag crossbody. It is a little bit short in terms of the strap for crossbody. So sometimes if I have the bag really full, it will stick out a lot like so and I'll have to wear it as a shoulder bag but my preference is always crossbody and I'll explain to you guys why I have back problems I've got bulging discs in my lower back I've got knots all over my shoulders 
and I've got some issues with my cervical spine or thoracic spine, I'm not sure which one. So I actually have pain in my back and shoulders and sometimes it does become nerve pain, which if any of you have experienced nerve pain before, you will know it can be quite debilitating and it can have quite a dramatic effect on your quality of life and it's really not, not a really nice thing. So for that reason, I like to wear my bags crossbody so that I'm not like this with my handbag because you can find when you're wearing a bag on one shoulder, you start, you know, leaning over and then it's not really good for your alignment. Um, I also do try to keep my bags lighter now and not carry too many things um, for that reason as well because I used to always be, particularly in the early 2000s, um, in 2010s, I used to always be on one shoulder because that was the fashion at the time and I did not yet have any problems at the time. And I think those years have culminated of the one shoulder handbag wear, it's culminated to some of the problems I have now. So if any of you guys are experiencing back problems, hit me up with a comment. Let me know that you know what I'm talking about or give this video a like and then us people sharing the pain get each other. Okay, so we're moving on to the year 2020. Now I only bought two Louis Vuitton bags in this year. So bag number 10 in my collection. This is the vintage Louis Vuitton pochette home. This is my vintage alternative to the toiletry pouch. This is the Epi version. Now this is in the Capango Gold Epi color, which is a discontinued color now. So as you can see here, you actually do get one slip pocket there no pocket there and if you open her up now i do have an organizer in there at the moment but if you open her up it's completely leather lined and you get one slip pocket here now i have this organizer in here not really for organization but so that i can have these d rings well they're actually picture frame triangles that i sewed on there myself so that i can wear the bag as a cross body bag so I got this actually from an Australian private seller on eBay and they had on the best offer function. So I used that and I got the price down to about 120 US dollars. So it was 180 Australian dollars at the time. I thought that was a steal. Now, as I said, this is my vintage alternative to the toiletry pouch. And I actually featured this bag in my top 10 vintage Louis Vuitton alternatives to Louis Vuitton's popular bags. Now, if you're interested in seeing 10 vintage alternatives to Louis Vuitton popular bags, I'll link the video up above and in the description box down below. 10 alternatives. It is such a jam-packed video. I'm sure you guys will love it if you haven't already seen it. Now, I love to wear this bag cross-body whether it's a gold chain or the shedder strap, all I do is just attach my strap to this little picture frame sticking out there. I love doing all these little strap hacks so that I get the most wear out of my bags in a way that's suitable for me. And I think that should go for everyone. You should be having the bag work for you and not you having to work for the bag. Because at the end of the day, you've already worked for the bag by working and saving and then spending your hard earned money to get it. Now that you've got it, the bag should be working for you in your collection and not just sitting pretty on a shelf, but also being functional for you as well. Now I've just got a bonus product, so not a bag, but this is my Louis Vuitton Damia Ben Kiss Wallet, which I got in 2019. So this is my only Louis Vuitton wallet. So as you can see here, it's done by a snap button. You open her up, she's got card slots on the side, a slot here, slot here. There's no slot on this side. And we've got the slot for the bills there. Now this is the card, now this is the coin compartment. That's the kiss lock there. I've got some coins in there and it does have Louis Vuitton on the hardware there. This is such a gorgeous vintage wallet. Oh, so cute. So I got her for about 130 US dollars, which is about 200 Australian dollars. 
and this was actually from the same seller which I got the St. Cloud from. I was happy with how this purchase went. So I went back and bought another piece from this seller. So it was really easy to buy from a Thai Instagram seller. Hi, if we haven't met before, I'm Lady Vintage Bags and I love vintage designer handbags. And I'm here to show you that you can not only own, but even collect designer handbags on a budget by buying vintage. So if you love pre-love, vintage or affordable designer handbags, then hit subscribe and stick around because I'm your girl. Okay, now back to the video. And we're up to bag 11 in my collection. This is the SAC Weekend PM. Gorgeous, gorgeous Louis Vuitton tote bag. And for me, she's my vintage alternative to both the Louis Vuitton Neverfull and the Louis Vuitton On The Go. Some of you may agree, some of you may disagree, but that's fine. This bag really packs a punch in terms of versatility and function. So this is what it looks like from the front. Gorgeous, large slip pocket here. If you wanna put your phone in there or something, that's great. Top zip that's something that the neverfull and the on the go do not have if we turn her around the back is exactly the same as the front it's got that huge pocket as well we've got this leather trim on the side and feet on the bottom so gorgeous and if we open her up there we go completely leather line i've got her stuffed big zippered pocket right here now this is the treated leather treated pigskin leather this bag is from the 80s feet guys feet and semi hard structured bottom this is built like a luggage bag thick rolled handles so it's easy to carry as handheld particularly if you have it stuffed a bit heavy now it's not as comfortable on the shoulder as it would be a never fall on the go, but still good nonetheless. Now, where did I buy this from? eBay seller, Australian private eBay seller. I paid about 425 US dollars, which works out to be at 550 Australian dollars at the time. I was really happy with this price. Now I love to wear this bag, not only on the shoulder, but I actually like to attach an extra strap and wear this as a longer shoulder bag like a thick guitar strap or crossbody if it's super heavy if i'm using this as a laptop bag and i've got heaps of stuff in it i will get that thick guitar strap and wear it crossbody so that it's distributing the weight this is my only louis vuitton tote i don't really use totes that much but for me this hits the mark we've got a zip we've got feet we've got treated leather water resistant with this treated leather i don't have to worry about the rain super convenient Mwah, love it okay now we're in the year 2021 so i did buy a couple of more bags in 2021 compared to 2020 so this is bag number 12 in my collection and this is the sack friedland epi leather in the gorgeous kenyan fawn caramel color isn't this such a gorgeous color to me this is actually the original cognac color i know louis vuitton's come out with the cognac collection in the empreinte leather but for me before this collection came out the kenyan fawn which is a discontinued color was one of the original cognac colors this and the pochette home to me they are the original cognac colors and actually i've got a video showing you 20 alternatives to this current cognac empreinte collection from these two kenyan fawn and capango gold colors which i'll link up above and in the description box down below for you and you can see how these new bags with the cognac colors they're like re-editions of the old bags with these colors okay let's keep going so this has a turn lock at the front with the gorgeous gold hardware completely leather lined I actually unboxed this video on YouTube as well. So one compartment, two compartment. Here we go with a zippered compartment at the back. Now this was a sticky and tarry pocket. 
you will find a lot of these Louis Vuitton bags the pockets have become sticky and tarry. They've disintegrated and melted over time. I think they had like a bit of like a vinyl -y lining and you got to clean them out unless you are happy to just leave them stuck together and not have a usable pocket at all. Otherwise, you've got to clean them out. It's not that difficult, but it is a little bit messy. Now, if you want to clean out your pocket or if you're looking at a vintage Louis Vuitton bag, but the pocket is holding you back from buying it, it's not that difficult to clean. And I actually have a tutorial video showing you on camera live me cleaning my pocket step by step so you can follow and I'll show you what products I use. So I'll link that tutorial video up above and in the description box down below for you. So like I said, sticky pockets, not that difficult to clean, just a little bit messy and just takes a little bit of time, but not that difficult. You can do it. This is what it looks like on the side. So we've got a cord-in shape here and this is what it looks like on the bottom. So this is the strap here. You can see it's got these adjustment notches and here. Now I bought this bag from, guess where I bought it from? My favorite Japanese seller on eBay. You all know who it is, brand JFA. So I got this for 450 US dollars at the time, which worked out to be about 580 Australian dollars. Now I was actually obsessed with this bag for like a whole year before I bought it. So the guy who I actually bought this Concorde from, he had posted a picture of the Sack Friedland on his page a year prior to me buying it. And for that whole time, I was just thinking about this bag and I finally found one that came up in a color that I wanted and at a price which I thought was reasonable and there I hit buy now and then it was mine and I unboxed it on YouTube now this bag I pretty much just wear exclusively crossbody you can wear it as a shorter shoulder bag which I'll show in the mod shots however in reality that's not really how I wear it so just crossbody for this one and I love this bag so much I did feature it in my five best vintage Louis Vuitton crossbody bags these five bags I recommend to anyone and you've already seen most of the bags in my collection here today so I'll leave that video linked up above and in the description box down below so bag 13 in my collection is the vintage Louis Vuitton Monceau in the black epi leather now I already told you before when I bought the Concorde I did actually want the Monceau instead but these were out of my budget at the time so I decided to settle for the Concorde but here I had now bought the Monceau this is the black epi beautiful gold hardware it is a mini briefcase just look at it and to me it is the original pochette Matisse and I have compared the two in various videos including this being the vintage alternative for the pochette Matisse in my 10 Louis Vuitton vintage alternatives to popular Louis Vuitton bags, which I've already linked for you. Gorgeous bag. So if we open her up with the beautiful S-locks, you guys know I'm obsessed with S-locks. She's currently stuffed, but front pocket, main compartment and a zipper there. No back pocket. And we have a crossbody strap detachable and adjustable now where did I buy her from she's from a Thai Instagram seller I bought this for about 460 US dollars so about 600 Australian dollars that was a to me a fantastic price for a Monso in this gorgeous condition Monsos tend to be on the higher end of the price range out of vintage Louis Vuitton bags. You can get some cheaper ones, but the condition tends to be too, mm, for me, this was a great condition for a great price. This was a good experience buying this bag. And I love to wear this bag crossbody. So for photos, I will pose with it like this, but in real life, I don't actually wear it by the top handle, but the top handle is super handy for when you are taking the bag off crossbody. Super handy, it makes it taking the bag on and off really easy. And you'll see in the mod shots that this bag is really versatile and you can wear this to corporate functions. It just has that kind of businessy look because it does look like a mini briefcase. So after that, in 2021, we got the 
monogram monceau so it is the same overview that i just showed you for this bag so we don't need to go through that again but how much did i pay for this and where did i buy this from this was not a great purchasing experience so this is bag number 14 in my collection i bought this from a facebook group from a seller in america the experience wasn't great number one she didn't tell me there was no strap in the listing she told me afterwards and then she said oh she didn't realize it wasn't in that ad because she was cross-selling it across different platforms and she added it to the description of the other platforms but not this one so that was the number one problem number two she didn't tell me that the d-rings here on the hardware are not original she said she didn't know i mean i gave her the benefit of the doubt um so no strap hardware is not completely original which i feel i felt a little bit deceived so i wasn't really happy with that seller i'll never buy from her again but i'll give her the benefit of the doubt that she didn't know about the hardware but is that true not true i don't know uh, this was 465 us dollars that i paid condition is worse than this price higher than this that was a bit crap but i really wanted a monogram one so i bought it um i'm not like regretting that I have a monogram Monceau because I love the Monceaus. But the use, the selling experience, the buying experience that user gave me was not great. Um, so yeah, I would never buy from her again. Um, so there's, there's that. Now this bag, again, got featured in my top five vintage Louis Vuitton or um, crossbody bags in conjunction with this bag so great and i love that it has the treated leather meaning it's weather resistant you can wear it rain hail or shine sling it on crossbody and then head on out no need to worry at all now we are in the year 2022 so this year i only bought one bag so economically we're having a bit of a downturn so spending has to go down with that <laughs> i've got to be realistic about our budgets everyone don't get carried away or don't let social media let you get carried away with your spending. I'm not someone who loves debt, so I only spend within what I have in my account. If I don't have it, then I can't buy it. Um, I'm not really into putting things on credit and then having to, you know, oh, wait till my next paycheck so I can pay off my credit card. I don't think that for me, um, that is a way for me to go because you can easily get carried away or I can easily get carried away. So I just try to not even allow myself to get to that. So only one Louis Vuitton bag for 2022. I mean, I already had 14 prior to this. So it's not like I was lacking Louis Vuitton bags. This is the vintage pochette accessoire, 21 centimeter size now in the Tassile yellow. Now I was so confused when I bought this bag. I did um, unbox this on YouTube. Now the I did think I was buying a pochette accessoire because that's what the ad said, but I didn't realize it was 21 centimeters. I thought what I was getting was the same as my Kenyan Fawn one, which is 24 centimeters. So then when I got it and I was unboxing it and in the middle of the unboxing, and I'll link the unboxing up above for you, you can see how confused I am in it. I noticed, oh my gosh, this, this is smaller. And I'm like, oh no, I've accidentally been sold a bucket bag pouch the bucket bag GM pouch. And it wasn't until one of my subscribers, Kesha, she's a YouTuber as well, gorgeous collection Kesha has. She said to me, no, this is actually the 21 centimeter size pochette accessoire. And I'm like, oh, that explains it all. So I was sold a pochette accessoire, which is, which is what I thought I was buying. And it is 21 centimeters. So she solved the mystery for me. So thank you, Kesha. This has gorgeous, purple interior so to seal yellow i've got a gold crossbody strap attached to here and here purple alcantara lining super simple construction one main compartment again i love using this the same way i use this bag cross body grab and go or dog walking bag super easy to pair super gorgeous and i love having these vintage pochette accessoires guess how much i bought this from guess how much i bought this for again from ebay this time not my favorite seller but a different seller so japanese seller again on ebay 
130 US dollars, so under 200 Australian dollars. What a way to end my Louis Vuitton handbag collection with a great deal, just like the deals I started off with in 2018. So happy. Okay, bonus time. Now we're going to look at my Louis Vuitton shoe and clothing collection. I'm going to combine it into one section. So first off, in 2020, I bought this Louis Vuitton cashmere short sleeve top. So this is a purple and pink or fuchsia top. So it does say Louis Vuitton stitched in there. Now this seller was just clearing out her collection and she was actually donating the proceeds to charity. So this was from a private Australian seller. She had it at an auction or buy it now price and I jumped the gun and just paid the buy it now price. Um, so it was 95 Australian dollars, so about like 70 US dollars at the time. So the price was pretty good. I could have got it for cheaper if I actually went through the auction, but I was just so excited. I just hit buy now. Um, it turns out that I'm actually a little bit too big for this top. I, um, well, normally I'm a size small, but this one's a little bit small for me. Or maybe uh, that's just my skewed perception. I'm not sure. Judge for yourself with these mod shots. Tell me down below. How do you think this top fits? Fits well or not well? I think it's not well. Let me know what you think. Okay, now for clothing, that's all that I have. Now I'm going to move on to shoes, which I have three pairs. So the first pair I bought are these Lombok loafers. These are, the Lombok loafers are my absolute favorite Louis Vuitton shoes. You might think, hey, that looks just like a granny loafer, but they are so comfortable. You have no idea. I've got wide feet. So a lot of shoes pinch me and these do not. So we've got the non-slip rubber at the back. So comfortable guys. If any of you have wide feet like me, so I am a size seven, US seven, Australian seven, or UK5. If you are a wide foot person like me, you're looking for a comfortable shoe. When I mean comfortable, I go dog walking in these shoes for kilometers and my feet do not hurt. If I need to go out with my friends and we're gonna be walking or catching a train, I've got to walk to the destination, I'll just go for these shoes. They're really easy to style up. I mean, loafers are on trend anyway, uh, particularly since Gucci released their loafers. Heaps of people are wearing loafers anyway, but they may look like granny when I'm holding them, but so easy to style. Japanese seller on eBay, 150 US dollars. So about 190 Australian dollars at the time. The price was really good. This is in the navy color. You can see there's heaps of scuffs on it, but I didn't care because the shoes and I'm gonna scuff them up anyway. So that was perfect for my budget. And I liked it so much. I bought these patent ones. Now these aren't Lombok. I'm not sure what the style is called. Now, actually the monogram has faded underneath the patent leather, unfortunately. You used to actually be able to see a monogram print, but now it just looks like plain brown with this gold hardware. Again, it's that same rubber bottom you see there. A little bit different in pattern, but the same non-slip. So comfortable to wear. I was worried about the patent being uncomfortable, but it's not. Now, these I bought off either Vestier or eBay, I can't quite remember now, but these were only 150 US dollars as well, so about the same price, so about 190 Australian dollars. Then I was like, no, I still love this shoe, I want more. Went on to Vestier and bought the brown long box. So now I have two pairs of shoes in the same style, just different colors. Love it so much. So this was from a UK seller on Vestier love 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 this one was 145 pounds so that's about 176 us dollars a little bit more expensive about 260 australian dollars because of vestiaire there's the taxes and the shipping so all these extra costs on top of what a price you agree on with the seller okay guys so that is my entire louis vuitton collection here we are in january 2023 who knows what might be added or what might leave my collection. Um, I'm not planning on anything to leave, but you never know what's gonna happen. You might wanna buy something, you have to let some things go. But for now, I do love every piece in my collection. 
15 bags in total, three pairs of shoes, and one top and one wallet. Let me know what you think. Now, if you haven't seen my Chanel collection yet, I'm going to be linking that just here for you. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.